This is seven in national news and in our top story. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai, has approved a programme for Emirati housing assistance worth 2.1 billion dirhams. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed made the order while visiting the headquarters of the Sheikh Zayed housing programme in Al Ramul and also ordered a review of 500 housing applications before the end of the year. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed also gave instructions to officials at the program to prepare a feasibility study report on building large housing product projects for Emirati citizens in different emirates in cooperation with local governments. He also approved 1.7 billion dirhams in the form of housing grants and 390 million dirhams in the form of housing loans for citizens and also ordered that houses be built to cater to the needs of about 700 families. The ruler of Dubai was accompanied by His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Crown Prince of Dubai, and His Highness Sheikh Maktoum bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Dubai's deputy ruler. Emirates, Enoch and EPCO service stations in Dubai are now accepting Visa and MasterCard credit and debit cards for all transactions including fuel sales from today. According to a company statement, the decision follows approvals from the Higher Committee for Consumer Protection at the UAE Ministry of Economy, as well as from discussions with card companies. It added that a service fee of two dirhams will be applicable for fuel sale transactions when using cards, which will go towards covering operational expenditure and connectivity expenses with card providers. This comes after fuel distribution companies in the UAE stopped accepting credit and debit cards for fuel transactions back in 2007. The Sharjah municipality confiscated almost 1,700 cars from industrial areas in the first half of the year for a number of violations. Additionally, a total of 11,267 cars were released in the Emirate after their owners paid the 500 dirham fine, in addition to towing charges. According to a local daily, most of the cars were found without license plates, parked in unauthorised areas or were displayed for sale, and trucks were also found left in areas for long periods of time, despite warnings from inspectors. The authorities are warning the community to park their vehicles in the permitted areas. Meanwhile, an inspection campaign to ensure the market is free of firecrackers also kicked off in the Emirate on Saturday. Starting from this month, Dubai's Road and Transport Authority will not accept any cash payments for vehicle registration renewals or no objection certificate applications from companies to renew trade licenses. The RTA has started a new payment method called e-wallet, so as to streamline payment methods and to increase transparency according to officials. They added that the e-wallet payment method can be used for online payments as well as payments at RTA centres and at RTA partner sites. E-wallet works by companies setting up accounts and then paying online for various services. The Emirates Authority for Standardisation and Metrology is giving textile merchants until the end of the year to use the metric system instead of yards in textile trading or else face the legal consequences. Engineer Mohammed Ahmed Al Muller, the director of metrology at the ESMA, was quoted as saying that after a meeting with the Union of Textile Merchants in Dubai, the metric system will be strictly enforced from the beginning of next year, which will give the merchants more time to adjust. ESMA began to impose the metric system of measurement across all sectors of the industry, following a cabinet order earlier this year and has so far successfully converted the use of feet to metres in land measurements and gallons to litres in petrol pumps and other markets dealing in liquid commodities. And finally, looking to other news now, the month of August sees Binhendi Jewellery roll out their grand sale at its flagship Dubai Mall Boutique. 
The grand sale sees exclusive offers on men's and ladies' watches from high-end fashion brands such as Noah, Martin Braun, Nubeo, Tire, Nautic and Welder, as well as special reductions on one of the world's most expensive phones by Swiss brand Goldvish, which sees 18-carat solid gold mobile phones encrusted in diamonds. Classic ladies' jewellery from New York's Jacob & Co. are also on offer. The Benhendi Grand Sale will run until the 31st of August as a part of the Dubai Summer Surprises. And according to Mohamed Tamimi, the general manager of Benhendi Jewellery, there has not been a grand sale quite like this before. Uh, here at Benhendi, we're very happy to offer our loyal customers the chance to take advantage of um, our exclusive, our first ever grand sale, which is part of the Dubai Summer Surprises. We've got exclusive brands ranging between uh, Jacob & Co, Goldvish, Terry, Nobio, and a few other um, brands which are again exclusive to Ben Hindi Jewelry. Also part of the grand sale, um, as I said, uh, Goldfish uh, mobile phones, which are one of the most expensive mobile phones uh, in the world. Uh, they're Swiss made. Um, they range from uh, 18 gold carats um, in all sort of types like uh, rose gold, white gold, and they're um, for the most exclusive customers that we've got.